So can I ask you to put your hands together to our Olympic and world champion, heptathlete champion, Jess Guerinis. Congratulations on winning the World Championships. Won the World Championships earlier this year, ladies and gentlemen, for the second time, which is, uh, which is absolutely fantastic. Uh, now, the first time you won was in 2009. Uh, you obviously won again this year. Um, but this year was a bit different because you actually won those World Championships after giving birth 13 months earlier. Which means more, your first ever World Championships or winning the one after you've given birth to young Reggie? I thought you were going to say which means more, my <laughs> similar world championships for me. Uh, the one in 2009, I actually had a, a, a serious foot injury the year before, so I wasn't quite sure how I was going to come back the following year. So that was a real big sense of achievement to have won that world championships, and that was my first world title. Um, but obviously, coming back from from having my son, you know, I I didn't know what kind of shape I'd be in, and you know, as any mother knows, it's, it's life changing, and um, you know, it's, it's very difficult. So I didn't think that I was going to come back. And win, so I, I have to say um, this World Championships. Absolutely. Well, just in case I haven't told you, you came back in reasonably good shape. I think it can be easy to say that. Being anyone in the world is pretty, is pretty good shape in my books. Now, uh, I introduced you quite quickly there, and uh, I'm actually going to go back a step and just go through a list of some of your honours. So, we'll start with the Commonwealth Bronze Medal in 2006, pretty much where it all started. The first World Championship Gold in 2009, a European Gold in 2010, a World Indoor Gold also in 2010, a World Silver in 2011, an Olympic Gold Medal in 2012, and a World Championship Gold Medal in 2015. I mean, that's not bad, is it? I mean, ladies and gentlemen, that is absolutely fantastic. If you can remember that list that I've just remembered, which one's your favourite? Uh, 2012, without a doubt. Um, that Olympics was, you know, the highlight of my career. It was an incredible year for me. And, um, you know, every athlete dreams of winning an Olympic gold medal and to have done it in London at home was, um, yeah, really, really special. Pretty much a dream come true. Absolutely, yeah. I read somewhere that as a youngster you had an aim of becoming an Olympic champion, but you didn't think it would ever happen. Yeah, I think when you're young, you never know if you can really do it. And, you you know, you start right at the beginning and it's, you know, school championships and South Yorkshire championships and it's such a, so many steps to get to that, you know, pinnacle of the, of the Olympic Games and to even become an Olympian is, is an amazing achievement and you know you worry that it comes around every four years and things can go wrong um, as I kind of experienced in 2008. <laughs> yeah so yeah it's, it's really tough so to, for it all to actually come together in that year was, was incredible. Brilliant and you talked a little bit about you know the early days just go back to the beginning so you were born in 1986 um, that was the year I won my first European Championship, it shows how old I am, but anyway. Um, born in 1986, grew up and obviously went to school here in Sheffield. Um, you was introduced to athletics by your mum and your dad, yeah. and you went and joined a local athletic club. And what did you do, just turn up and say, I fancy having to go at everything? Were you hoping to be a sprinter, long distance runner, thrower? What was it? Yeah, so that was my first taste of athletics. I'd, I'd never done it before, and um, yeah, it was really just to try everything. And, and you know, thankfully I fell into the hands of a really great coach, and he kind of steered me in the direction of the heptathlon. Um, but I think originally when I started, I did want to be a sprinter. Okay, so I wanted to be a sprinter. And when did your coach, which is the same coach you've got today, if my memory serves me correct, Tony Bilicello, um, when did he begin to realise that, hey, oh, this girl's got a bit of talent, that's the closest I can do to a chef with accent, by the way. I don't know if he's any good or not, but... That's good. <laughs> so when did he first, you know, sort of say to you, do you know what, we've got something here? Uh, I think he, he always says that he saw, you know, a, a talent in me from a young age, and he knew that I had, you know, a good running style and just kind of a natural talent. Um, but obviously it's taken a number of years to develop me as an athlete and a number of years of training and, and for Tony as well to learn as a coach and develop as a coach. 
coach, so it's been a real partnership and learning curve for both of us. Did you get any other did you get any other opportunities to play any other sports? Were you interested in other sports or was it purely focused on athletics from a young age? So I played a bit of basketball, but I was rubbish, I was just too small and not very good. Um, and then it was athletics from then I you know, I just loved it and I just wanted to do athletics all the time and I just wanted to be you know, I wanted athletics to be my career. Well, you obviously made the right decision, and if we sort of fast forward now to what you you said earlier, what was your you know your, 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 the, the most favourite event, which was London 2012? Um, going into those games, how were you feeling? Were you feeling confident because you had been beaten in the World Championships the year before, and you, you won a silver? I remember once saying to, to somebody in the press, actually, this is written perfectly for you because to go into that winter, bit between the teeth, having had a defeat that shouldn't have happened, did that spur you on? And how were you feeling? going into 2012? Yeah, it definitely spurred me on. Um, I just had that image of um, me crossing the line, winning the silver, um, and I actually crossed the line at the end of first and the Russian girl was behind me. She had this massive roar and she had her arms out and you could just see on my face disappointment. And they captured that moment perfectly and I, I've got that picture at home and I just always think I don't want to have that feeling again. Um, and it was all about 2012 and I just wanted to be at the top of my game. So I think in a strange way it, it did work out well that I had that fire in my belly to Go and train even was, it, was it a bit like that scene in Rocky IV where he's got a picture of Dolph yeah. Lundgren on his mirror? <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> so it's not as corny as you think. That, that, that sort of stuff does work, ladies and gentlemen. So you make the Olympic Games, obviously. It's in London. It's in your hometown. You're in, you know, you're in fast, fantastic shape. What was it like walking out into that stadium for event one on day one? Were you confident? Were you really nervous? You know, how were you feeling? I was really, really nervous. Um, I think, you know, the, the weeks leading into the games, I was, I was so nervous and I just kept thinking, I just want everything to go well, you know, I've trained so hard. And then when I actually did step into the stadium, I kind of did feel that element of calmness because I'd done everything I could possibly do. I wasn't injured, I was in the best shape of my life and all I had to do is just do what I've done on so many occasions. You know, I've done the heptathlon so many times, I just had to replicate that. Were you more nervous in London than any other championship? Or so would you say it's about the same? Did London bring on a little bit more nerves? Yeah, absolutely. Definitely? I think I've never experienced a crowd like that. And stepping into the stadium and just, you know, it was nine o'clock in the morning and the stadium was full and everyone was cheering and it was just such an adrenaline rush. And then I had to, you know, put all those thoughts out of my mind of what if you fall over the first hurdle, if something goes wrong and then it's done. I just had to think positively and just make sure that I did what I knew I could do. So five events later, we've got one event to go, it's the second day, you've only got the 800 metres to go, you pretty much know what you've got to do to, uh, to, to win the gold, your odds aren't to your favourite to win it at that point, what's going through your mind at that point? So we have a really big break between the long jump, um, we have the long jump, the javelin, and a really big gap between that and the 800 metres. So I had about six hours um, in, you know, below the stadium just to myself, just thinking, oh, I'm so close, but I don't want to get carried away and, you know, mess up. So I was just trying to keep really, really focused and make sure I just went out and just ran the race that I knew I could run and um, hope for the best. Well, you did that, and it was it, it turned out to be the best, and it turned out to be Super Saturday, as I think it was it was nicknamed. Three gold medals on that uh, on that night. Yourself, Mo, and as I call it, the Ginger Jumper, Greg Rutherford. Um, uh, what was that like? Once you'd know you'd won that gold, the work's been done. What's the first thing, the first emotion that you go through once you've you know you've crossed the line and you know you've done it? For me, it was just pure relief. It was just, thank goodness I've done it. You know, I, I've, I've done what I set out to achieve um, when I started athletics. And thank God I haven't let the nation down because everyone, you know, if I'd come away with a silver medal, you know, that would have been huge disappointment. So it was, it was huge relief and just, yeah, excitement. I think it would have been more of a huge disappointment to you. I think we all still would have loved you for winning the silver medal anyway, because as you said earlier on, to get to Olympic Games is, is one thing to actually, you know, to get a medal is absolutely fantastic. So great, moving a little bit away from actual, the actual Olympic Games, it takes a lot obviously for you to get to that stage, to get into that shape. Now you've got a team behind you, and I think it's called Team Genis. I don't know if anybody knows about that, Team Genis. Um, tell us about Team Genis, who's in there and, and pretty much what do they do? So it's an amazing little team we've got here in Sheffield and it's, it's comprised of my coach, obviously myself, um, my javelin coach Mick Hill, um, a fantastic physio Alison Rose, Derry Suchu is my soft tissue therapist, 
I, I can't list them all, but it's you know it's, there's about eight of us, and um, everyone works individually to make sure that I can train as hard as I can, that I'm in one piece, and that everything's taken care of so that I can perform on those two days and compete. So you really need a really great support network around you and team that can really help you bring out the best in you. Now there's one person you did forget to mention in that team, the newest member of that team, of Team Jenis, <laughs> and uh, he's only about this high at the moment, um, possibly run about 10.2 for the 100 most probably already, I don't know, uh, but that's young Reggie, now he came into your life how long ago now? He's 14 months 14 now. months yeah. now, 14 months ago he came into your life, now obviously that changed your life. How did you manage to cope with having a young baby, being a, a young mum, and trying to take on the world? Uh, well, it definitely wasn't easy, so obviously you adjust to everything being a mom, and you know, he's just been a fantastic baby, and um, obviously our family have helped so much, so both mine and my husband's parents are, are local, they live in Sheffield, and you know, they love babysitting, and my dad brings Reggie down to the track, so he can be in, you know, a sporting environment and watch what his mum does, and it's just everyone just helping and chipping in and, and working as a team, but yeah, we feel very lucky that we've, we've got him in our lives. Well, every time you talk about you've always got a big smile on your face and obviously means a hell of a lot to you and uh, which, which is great to see. Now uh, again stepping forward, moving forward, I read I think it was in the Telegraph that you are thinking you are talking about retirement maybe at the end of 2017, is that right, is that wrong, have I let the cat out of the bag? No, well I'm turning 30 in January so... Oh yeah, really old. <laughs> You know, as a heptathlete, you tend to peak in your kind of mid to late 20s. So that's, you know, when I was in London, basically. So I am kind of, yeah, getting to that stage, but very much focused on Rio. I'd love to, to have a fantastic last Olympic Games. So you'll do the Olympic Games. Will you do the World Championships that are here in London as well the, the year after? Or will you wait and see what happens in Yeah, I think wait and see, really. It depends how Rio goes and, um, you know, seeing how my body's holding up and, and if I'm ready to do another year. But definitely no more after that. Okay. <laughs> well, whatever it is you do, whenever you decide to, to have the, you know, the, the spikes, we all wish you, you know, the best of luck. We'll all be there pushing for you and voting for you and cheering you on in Rio next year. Ladies and gentlemen, please can I ask you to give a round of applause for Jessica Evans.